Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button. What's good, Danny? How have you been? I've been good, dude. I just got back from New York yesterday. Dodged fucking a winter storm in spring. Like, so, like, I, I saw all of my family's timelines, like a winter wonderland. I'm like, yeah, that's why I left Monday at five in the morning because I'm yeah. not dealing with that shit, bro. It would have been a fucking disaster, dude. Like, right. You know what I You said certain... spring, that, that keyword, sorry to interrupt you, no, but that word tripped me out. I forgot, like, how far into the year we are. Yeah, dude, spring, dude. Times went forward, clocks are all fucked me up, lost an hour of sleep. But, dude, I'm not gonna lie, man, leaving work today at 7 30 and it's still sunny. Bro, uh -huh. that's a beautiful fucking <laughs> right, thing, dude. Right. It's 6.30 for you, and, like, the fucking looks like it's fucking noon. Like, that's... I know people hate it, but, bro, I love it. Like, I love it. I'd rather the mornings be a little bit darker if my days mm. and nights are going to be lighter outside. And there's something nice about... And, again, we, should, we, we shouldn't be making decisions based on people's, like, enjoyment of drinking outside. But as a 34-year-old <laughs> man, like, I'm very excited about the sun being outside. We should. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, New York was great. Great family time. We had the um, celebration of life for my mom and stepdad. So mostly a roller coaster, but it was nice to be there. It was good for the soul. And then <clears throat> on the day of my mom's brunch, the weather was gorgeous, like Amazing. gorgeous for that time of the year. So yeah, it was like, it kind of like all came together in a pretty beautiful way. Um, but yeah, man, we got back safe and sound, no stress. So I uh, can't complain. Took Monday off just to make sure men today was a good spot today for work. But yeah, man, I've been good. How about you, man? You had the uh, the, the, the place to yourself. Wifey was abroad doing her fashionable lifestyle. So how were you doing chilling in the bay? It was good. Um, I'm not going to lie. The first night I was kind of lonely because she, she always tries to guilt trip me before she dips. Like, oh, do you even miss me? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, not the first night, like the first night I'm chilling, but the first night I was you like, you actually were this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just got in my head and I was like, yo, what if it feels like this all the time? And then I was like, damn, I'd be sad as fuck. So then I, yeah, I yeah. got lonely. Yeah. But, um, I feel that. Uh, as the, the weekend went on, um, it was fine. I mean, honestly, I did all the stuff that, uh, like I normally would do that would piss her off, like play video games. Um, <laughs> My boy came down, so so we went out and had some, some nice. time, which was was nice. Uh, but yeah, I think for me, I don't know. I realized I need to like just get back in shape because that weekend I was just sloppy. Like I was eating McDonald's, pizza. I was like, this is my. It was like a little kid who's been given freedom yeah. to just like eat all the snacks and stuff. So that's the the thing with that. But um, she's back. Uh, and we're ready to see some movies, which is our favorite pastime, specifically right, so Scream. Scream. Is Scream. Yeah, yeah Scream. dude, I, I've heard I heard a good review about that um, on the way of driving back home from work to on, on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. That that for some reason that series like is one of the few ones that's returned, and it's like even better than the original. Even better. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say it's even better. Like it's cool that Courtney Cox is still a part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Nev Campbell is still a part of it. I'm not crazy, but. I like to have the new girl from like the Adams family Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's great. Other actresses like cute and like you believe her when she's like doing her thing. So yeah, no, it is dope. I will say, man, um, it is funny on like new genres of scary movies. Unlike back in the day, like and obviously I haven't seen the movie yet either. But like they were saying that it's weird now how like you can just get stabbed and like still survive. Like you know, mm -hmm. people get stabbed at close range. And like in this, it's like yeah, he he still has a pulse. It's like how, bro? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is crazy, and it's also crazy too how like these types of films. Uh, I think generally people aren't as afraid of, of them, but like when the, with the paranormal shit, for some reason that just terrifies people way more. I'm more when, scared of the scream shit. Yeah, same. I'm like, this could happen. Like, I could get on the subway and some dude might flip out and stab the shit out of me, but little girls like with their heads spinning around vomiting on the walls and shit keep that like i don't keep care. that like yeah keep that yeah that's not happening in coconut creek so i'm not yeah. worried about that but the, <laughs> the stabbing that shit could happen anywhere no i feel you with that that's funny uh yeah i think we're gonna do the movies too because we actually have a light weekend uh i think we're, but we're gonna watch uh creed first because uh yeah nice. I, I, too many people are talking about it i don't want to be like left out of uh of the of the circle for that one they're, they're talking yeah, about great. just you know side note they're talking about making like a whole like creed universe like uh like a show oh, like a show on amazon prime just like i don't know like a spinoff of some kind 
Um, because again, the, I, I heard the shout out to Mr. Corny. Like the, <laughs> the movies just keep doing like far better than anyone ever thought. So it's like, bro, yeah. let's just make more of this. Yeah, and I keep seeing memes about him apparently being a longtime anime fan, and he incorporated, I guess, a lot of the fight scenes from anime into to boxing, which I didn't realize until after. I was like, mm. why does this scene look so dope? But then I realized, oh, it's because he he did it differently than most others other movies do it. it like it's I won't give away details, but sure, sure, sure. basically it's if you ever watched an anime and two people go at it, it's super dramatic and like the details are intense and he kind of mimicked that in the the film. Nice. So like a, a way of flattery, but also like a new way of doing like a boxing movie. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. excited to do, but yeah, we'll definitely talk about how you enjoyed Scream because, fuck, I might do two movies um, this week. You know what's funny, dude? When I was a kid, like my biggest thing, and again, we also, it's, it's just funny when you have like no other responsibility, especially in the summer, bro, when you're like a 10 year old kid, like what else are you fucking worried about? So on right. a hot summer day in New York, we would buy tickets for like the one o'clock show go uh-huh. bop, buy popcorn after the movie's over and then just uh-huh. walk into like the 3 30 or 4 o'clock show for free and yeah. and like the people knew what the fuck we were doing but it's like bro, who cares you know what I mean? like, right no i've done like, that before but that shit is tiring because like one time i was like oh sh- should we go for a three p and just do a third one and i'm like i'm falling asleep at that yeah point. you're falling asleep but if it's like two back to back you're like i can do that but again that's why probably why binge uh binge watching tv is so popular now uh, more than mm-hmm. ever which is probably fucking up the movie theaters but yeah. cool man uh but let's get into it episode 134 sorry was it 134 no 135 135 mm-hmm. episode 134 is currently up on youtube uh and episode 134 will be up on all podcast platforms uh by the time this episode is up as well but let's go into it episode 135 I think the biggest thing in the pop culture, hip hop realm this entire weekend was the fallout from Hit Boy and, um, and the Alchemist's new single. For some reason, I thought it was an album and I got uber fucking excited. But then I'm Same. like, oh, it's just one song, bro. Like, yeah, so yeah. maybe there's more to come. But, oh my bad. I was definitely, uh, I was definitely um, excited to peep the track. The track is called Slipping Into Darkness. Um, so first, let's like kind of like our reaction to the songs and we can do the fallout later. So what were your thoughts on the actual song itself? I thought the song was phenomenal. Um, rarely do we get to hear Alchemist rap nowadays. So it was amazing to see him uh, prove that he still has has it, um, even from like a lyricism standpoint. Um, I loved Hit Boy's beat. I, I have to say I actually preferred Hit Boy's beat. Um, an alchemist over it than vice versa. Um, right, to, to give the listeners who have that, that was like the, the, I guess the, the music like savant in us, like losing our minds, right? So it was mm-hmm. Hit Boy rapping over the alchemist, like it's two different beats combined together, alchemist yep. rapping over Hit Boy and Hit Boy rap- rapping over alchemist. So like, hey. Yep. So basically the, the new era's legend within hip hop, new era legendary producer slash rapper on the beat of uh, hip hop legend Alchemist, who's also a producer slash rapper. Um, so it was, it was cool to see those two worlds collide. Um, but I think the biggest theme of it was that Hit Boy apparently threw some shots at his contemporaries like DJ everyone. Mustard. Yeah, everyone that that we love, like Metro Boomin. Who else? Um, uh, the biggest one was... Um... Well, not the biggest one, but Hitmaker was one that, oh, we, yeah, always, Hitmaker. that we fucking yep. always show love to. Muster for sure. Um, and then a bunch of subliminals to like almost any producer. Like, just like, mm-hmm. you don't do what I can do. Whenever you produce, there's always uh, co-producers on the track. Like, right. so, yeah, that was, that. I mean, so I know that was the biggest thing. But for me personally, um, the biggest thing, yo, I didn't, so I didn't go into the track. Because we spoken about, I've always heard Hit Boy randomly drop a, a verse here and there. Mm-hmm. So I didn't go into the track thinking that I'm going to hear the Alchemist rap. So uh. I thought Hit Boy changed his flows mid beat. So, like, <laughs> I thought it was Hit Boy both times. So I was like, yo, that first version seems super New Yorker, bro. Like, what was that? Yeah. And then, yeah, I didn't do, I didn't even know that the Alchemist could spit. Like, I just thought yeah. he was, because oh, my first introduction to him was like, Prodigy. Action Bronson, mm-hmm. like he's the producer that everyone goes to for that grimy New York City beat. 
So yeah, yeah dude, that that for me was the biggest thing because I was like, I didn't even know this fucking guy does this, and it was mm-hmm. like a fun approach and like the word the shit he was saying about like his drip i'm like damn he's like grimy but yeah but on the show fuck that delicious like that's also like his personality like, he always wears yeah. like nice shit even though like he looks like he fucking hates life so like that was just a, <laughs> a cool thing to have him like say it over bars yeah and I, I don't know if you're familiar but he he actually started rapping way back I, he must have been like 10 or 11 and i don't know if you're familiar with the, the actor scott Kahn. But Mm-mm. they all grew up together And okay. they were part of a little group called uh, The Hooligans, I want to say With um, I believe DJ Muggs This is like West Coast stuff So okay. most people probably aren't familiar with this But yeah, he he rapped as a, a kid For a while Then I think once produce, production became a thing And he linked it up with Mob Deep yeah, yeah. Like that was his main thing But he's always been a a, a really good spitter For someone who's not like Trying to be in the limelight yeah and it's also something fun about like knowing you can do it well but doing it when you want to so it's never like a force thing like right. i don't feel like these guys got in the studio like you have to spit he's like no i don't want to bro it's like yeah i'll do it but like yeah like i have i have 16 bars just lying around but yeah i, I love i mean we've always said this man like going back to astroworld or mac like dude like when when you can properly do the beat change and it doesn't feel like a force thing Bro, mm-hmm. that takes the level. Again, maybe that's so oh, yeah. simple that we're like, oh my God. And to them, that's like, bro, it's nothing. But I don't know. To me, bro, like that just takes the the song quality to a next level, bro. Because mm-hmm. again, you go into the song thinking vibing one way and to completely switch that up, but then still be vibey is pretty impressive. Yeah, no, 100% agreed. Um, yeah, yeah. Hip Boy, he, he's someone, I, I would say he's my favorite, like, new era producer because he yeah, has so. the versatility to do pretty much everything and i i don't know if he had a chip on his shoulder and and he just like was hanging out with alchemists and was like you know what like i really am better than all these dudes and like wanted to just basically you know be competitive or whatnot but i i think he is the most well-rounded out of the guys he mentioned at least from what we've seen yeah well-rounded i mean again i don't need my producers that need to rap so like right. i don't think like that should be like one of like the ticks you have to like you know check off you know for you to be considered one yeah. of the most but even beat wise yeah i did production wise no for sure so like be- before we get into if he's right or wrong right um do you think like what are your thoughts on like producers beefing though you know what i mean like is it because it's hip-hop we're like yeah that's cool like i get mm-hmm. it because like, i feel like that's another thing like that we just accept as a norm in hip hop, but like I don't think like pop production or guys are like yeah yeah I'm way better than fucking that right. guy. You know what I mean? It's like all right, he makes songs, I make songs. That's pretty much where the right. comparison ends. I don't know. I think we're we're in a new era, especially with social media, where producers want to be in the limelight now, okay. and a lot of them are dabbling in rapping. Um, I think in general the barriers a lot lower than it was before. So I think a lot lower. A yeah. lot of people kind of already see them as rappers like they're just as famous people know who dj mustard is what he looks like uh, i don't think he rapped like as an example but um at the end of the day i think there's enough uh presence from them to where they can kind of publicly call each other out and people will take sides yeah so then, then to play devil's advocate since these guys that he called out don't spit is it almost like an unfair advantage though? Because like there's no, there's not going to be a response besides like subliminals or direct like you know meme sharing on IG, right? Because how yeah. is Metro Boomin, Mustard, or Hit Boy gonna ever? Well, I think Hit Boy used to rap. Like Young Berg used to rap, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, so I guess he. I'm sorry, Hit Hitmaker. Sorry, he could respond, but like Young Berg and Mustard are the bigger names, and like I don't think they're gonna respond. So I got. Like, do you think right. like it's an unfair fight? I mean, in a perfect world, this would just light a fire under all of them, and they would just and they'll just go, go to the, the studio. Comes to- <laughs> like you see the most random collaborations, like DJ Mustard and like Jay Z or something, and just it would just be better for the consumer at the end of the day. Like you're, you're kind of forcing companies to to fight to improve to win the, the consumer yeah. over. But at the end of the day, that's probably not going to happen. All they're going to do is they're like, I can't rap. So I'm just going to talk shit on Instagram. 
Yeah, that's all that's going to happen for sure. Um, no, but I, I would have to say, I know Metro for me is up there. Like, I would say it's it's Metro and Hip Boy one and two. I would say Hip Boy's one only because I'm more impressed with like the stuff he did with Nas alone, right? Mm-hmm. And then going back to like the stuff on uh, Watch the Throne and like all these other songs that you're like, oh shit, he also produced that. I will say Metro Boomin is having a very impressive career though, because I think my man is barely 30, 29 maybe. And like his accolades and the way he can switch up types of beats, like the pop stuff he can do for the weekend, the shit he can do for like the Migos for future, and then put out his own shit, never say a word. And the shit goes, you know, platinum. Like yeah. I would say, I think, Number one, I agree. With you. I think Hit Boy is a better producer. Like I, I genuinely believe that. But I do think consumption wise, I think Metro does better. Oh, like I sure. think if Hit Boy put out an album the same way Metro put out Heroes and Villains, I do still think Metro is outselling him and is being consumed more. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on the Hit Boy point. Um, I'm impressed with his ability to seemingly bring out the best. In- Correct whoever he's working with Metro boom. And I love all his beats. Um, but it, it's hard to tell because some, like a lot of times the artist is already so dope. I'm like, this yeah. was bound to happen. Whereas like, I only have one Saweetie song in my playlist and hit boy produced <laughs> it. And it's not even cause the only the beats good. Like Saweetie did a, a great job on that beat. But you almost think like, that like it's hit boy who brought that out of her. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, it's it's hip boy who's who's uh you know coaching people and getting them to this level or even maybe he's not saying anything but they're the beat and his creative process just motivates them so much to the, to the point they they respect his craft and just put out the best work yeah no no i agree i agree that's why i think i would have to bring it out to him because i think we spoke about this uh before and after po- oh that post one god god forbid uh pop <laughs> smokes passing that we were like, yo, whoever his producer is, like, bro, they're like soulmates, bro. Because it's mm-hmm. like, I know exactly what I need to do to get this guy to reach some kind of level that no one thought was uh, possible. So, yeah, for right. that alone, I would say Hip Boy is a better producer. But it's close. But, yeah, I mean, it's just fun, bro. Like, nothing's ever going to happen violently. This is all, like, fucking just fun and games. Like, yo, like, we were just saying with uh, Michael B. Jordan, bro. Like, talk your shit, bro. Like, if someone's bullying you or you feel that people don't respect you on the level that other people respect other producers. Like, bro, like if you can back it up, which you can, bro, be petty. Yeah. Like I always vote for petty at least yeah. once <laughs> and then walk it back later, bro. But if you can be yeah. petty, be petty. Right. And it's also funny how like, like people use the argument that's uh, convenient for them to back up their, I guess, position or accolades. Cause like hit make us like, well, you're not on the radio. Right. But <laughs> I think Alchemist is one of the producers that like I've only heard good things about from like right. everyone at every level. And Alchemist isn't, as far as I'm aware, he hasn't been on the radio yet. No. People respect the shit out of his craft to get like a beat from him is is almost like a Jay Z verse, getting a Jay Z verse in a way. So it's just weird how like Hitmaker used that argument with Hit Boy, yet he would never say that about Alchemist, or maybe he would. Who knows? I don't think so, bro. There's certain people you don't diss. And I think, yeah, like, you know, I don't think Alchemist can catch a stray on that one because it's like, he didn't say anything. And I think even if he would have said anything, I think that's one that you're like, ah, maybe he was just generalizing it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he wasn't right. talking about me. He was talking about that guy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but I, I definitely respect uh, what Alchemist did. But yeah, I would say, yeah, I agree with you. Hit Boy seems to be the number one producer now. And if you want to talk that shit over a, an Alchemist beat, like I think most most people want to do that. But again, I wouldn't be mad though if we got more Alchemists like rapping. I wasn't mad about it. Like I literally, I actually enjoyed that verse better, even though he wasn't like, you know, I get him right. what was like the attention because of what he said. But as far as content and enjoying a verse, I actually enjoy the Alchemist verses better. Right. And I almost forgot another person that I think is proof that Hit Boy does something in the studio is uh big sean i think like ever since big sean's been linked up with hit boy i've i feel like the music level is elevated so much 
Yeah, dude. But um, speaking of Big Sean, this is like a nice little tangent then. Um, dude, do you think he's on the clock? It's as far as like him just falling off? Uh, well, just as like him putting out a body of work that like to keep us engaged, mm, right? Because I, I feel like he saying. dropped well, the album that had deep reverence that had four or five songs that you and I thoroughly enjoyed because of the messaging behind it. He then came out with, I think, what, a three or four song EP last year that was just him and Hit Boy. Didn't really move the needle much, if we're being perfectly honest, right? Like we, I think we both enjoyed the Hit Boy produced songs on his album. It was a Detroit uh-huh. 4 or Detroit 3 or whatever? Uh, I forget the name. It was Detroit um, something. Like, I think it was like a, a nice Detroit way to end. Detroit 2. Detroit 2. Okay, yeah. So it was a nice, because that, that was the last album that he was signed to under his like contract like uh um you know legal things whatever but do you think he's on the clock right now like he needs to come out with something right because as of right now he's really just an influencer who does great interviews and just had a baby with jen like that's that's all he again and that's fine but in the age of hip-hop where it feels like you should be at least putting out an album like every two to three Hmm. years i feel like all right we're going like three years now that we really haven't heard of you yeah, or from you, sir. I I would say he's he's on the clock in the sense of, like I think people are gonna begin to to wonder, you know, where he's at and if he's coming out with anything like over the next year or so. Mm. Um, if if it's longer than that, I'd say people will probably kind of forget in a sense. But I feel like he's big enough and solidified enough to where. People will be interested. However, I don't think it's going to be doing crazy numbers unless it includes like a single that's just getting crazy. Or Kanye dish something. Yeah. Like I don't, if it's even if it's just like a quality thing like Detroit 2, which I thought overall was a great body of work. Very good body of work. I don't think work. it's going to, I don't think something that's equivalent to that is going to do very well unless it includes like a hot single. Mm. Yeah, or that's, maybe that's, yeah that's, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I don't even know, like, because, um, again, we give Kendrick the benefit of the doubt, right? Like, he can go away for four or five years. It's like, yeah, but he's an artist. Like, he's just, mm-hmm. you know, working on his craft. And I feel like with Big Sean, I don't think he gets that benefit of the doubt. Like, it's always like when I feel like when he comes back, it's always to prove that he didn't fall off. Right. right? Like, I don't think people allow him just to, like, go away and be in peace. You know what I mean? Right. Especially when he, like, he's made it very clear. Like, he has, like, like every man does mental health issues that he's trying to right. work through every day. I feel like he still doesn't get like the benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah, hey, he's just like, you know, at some point we'll get an album. It'll be great. And it's like, dude, see, he didn't come out with an album because Kanye dissed him and he mm-hmm. ain't shit. And like, I feel like it's always that connotation, which is weird, bro. Cause we both love him so much. Yeah. I mean, I know, I mean, he just had a kid. He probably wants to take a step back. I know a lot of rappers like Lil skies have been doing that. Um, Probably great yeah, content will come about that whole like dynamic, right? About the kid too. But I, even if there is, I feel like it's going to be people like me and you who just like want good hip hop. I don't think the casual fan is going to gravitate towards it unless it has a couple like "I don't f with you" type singles mm. that just are undeniably catchy and you just hear it nonstop. So you're trying to say you think that he's moved into the realm almost to like what we said last week or week before about Wiz that like it's really like his day one fans that have just matured and like are still riding with him as opposed to like him capturing a new audience these days? Yeah, I think so. And I think ever since he's like become a dad and been dealing, make perfecting his mental health, I think he kind of doesn't care about chasing a single or anything. I think mm. he just wants to put out music. I'm sure it'll do well enough for his standards. Um, so I, I don't even know if he necessarily cares. Which is great. I hope, and I really hope he's in a space where he doesn't give a fuck at all. But uh, yeah, I mean, we love Detroit too. Oh, dude, that's the one that he commented on when we said he was like uh, yeah, yeah. top five. So yep, with uh, the, the Nip song. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we've been, you know, we've been riding with Big Sean. But uh, so yeah, hopefully we get an album soon. But if we don't, uh, I'm sure whenever it drops, um, the true fans will appreciate it. True, true music fans should appreciate it. Um, yeah. But going back real quick to the uh, Metro Boobin and Hit Boy controversy, that led to some more drama on the interwebs over the weekend because academics posted, um, so when is Metro Boomin going to respond, blah, blah, blah. And then Metro very 
politely requested that academics please never post anything about him ever again. And then I think Ack was off the Henny and this led to 45 since deleted Instagram posts, essentially like baiting Metro Boomin to keep like antagonizing him to respond more on his page or teasing him for not responding officially to hit boy in any capacity. So your thoughts on that exchange. And really it was an exchange. It was like one exchange and then just <laughs> just act is going off. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I thought it was funny. Um, just because rarely, rarely do we see Ak publicly on his page do that. Like I, I'm on YouTube frequently, and I see a lot of this go down on his Twitch channel. Sure, because uh, he reposts a lot of his clips from Twitch on the YouTube, and that's where he kind of talks about the personal drama that isn't fitting for his page. Okay, so the fact that he was not only posting but posting multiple times, back to back like showed me that he was really irked by Metro Boomin. Um, I don't know off the top of my head how the, the beef started. I know it was something previous, something a, a lot of times it's like the same with six, nine. It's, it's always a rapper or producer who out of the blue is like, Oh, uh, like we don't like snitches or, Oh, uh, academics is toxic. Like rapper rappers and producers, they'll do that. And then academics and six nine will catch wind of it, mm. and then flip out and just, you know, uh, also just essentially, yeah, insult them yeah. publicly until they get checked. I guess yeah. put in their place, so to speak. So, 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 so then behind the scenes, then because I don't watch his Twitch at all. Uh, so that what the version that we got over the weekend where he was going off on act on uh, Metro Boom and that happens a lot on like other topics. Like him uh, just not, talking, not like on reckless. him specifically, but other people. Yeah, like not Blue Metro Boomin, but instance. like I'm just talking about him just going off and like yeah. you know losing his mind on people. Yeah, he did that with Blueface um, more recently. Uh, he's done it with uh, Paul Rosenberg from Hot uh, 97. Yo, everyone's coming for Paul Rosenberg right now. Oh, though, uh, Rory and Maul. He's done it with them a million yeah. times. Well, apparently Basically, they threatened his life though. Like they said, he said they pulled up to his crib and like didn't come yeah. in. But so, yeah, but but I, I think they I think Roy pulled up because he Ak was going said something off. about his girl <laughs> or something. So like it's no one's truly innocent. Um, I guess you could say like some one of them, you know, instigated or took it a little far. But at the end of the day, it just keeps escalating to a point where people are just saying some foul shit about each other. Yeah, yeah, and then they delete it because he deleted all that shit from his IG page. Mm -hmm. Um, so then just for like who academics is right like I, like his role and i think he said a couple times in some deleted posts that i'm the media i can say whatever i want you don't have to look at my fucking page blah 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 mm -hmm. but do you think it's tough bro to use that title if you are going to come at artists like this aggressively you know what i mean like yeah like do you think that like, the long-term play is to his benefit because I'm like, I feel like sometimes the benefit was that, yo, he used to have like every rapper just hop on his podcast or Twitch and like vibe with him. Yeah. That's how like, yo, Drake would be like, you know, going back and forth with it. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know, if you start pissing off everyone in the industry, I feel like at some point you're going to be the last man standing. Yeah. Or you won't be the last man standing, sorry. Right. I really think it depends on his long-term goals. Um, he is big enough to where most rappers, even if they secretly aren't a fan of him, are going to still be cordial and speak to him or collaborate Hope he or whatever. Post their new song or some shit. Yeah, something like that. Um, but I think in terms of the long-term play for academics, yeah, it just really depends on where he wants to be because other media outlets have like anonymity or whatever on their side. So they can be this shadowy figure that no one knows personally and sure. just kind of get mad at them and forget. Whereas academics like he's obviously a human being who runs the page. So he is going to have to worry about the things he says. If you, if he wants to, you know, excel beyond just Twitch or YouTube, otherwise, I mean, you can go say the Alex Jones route or whatever, where you can say whatever you want about whoever you want, but eventually you're going to hit a ceiling and certain people aren't going to work with you, or you might even get banned straight up by yeah, one of these point. platforms. So if he's, I mean, I'm sure he's going to have tons of money regardless, but 
also at a certain point who cares what youtube and twitch thinks what if someone does pull up to your crib and try to hurt you yeah that's the other part dude because like, the people he's beefing with or looking like these are all you know yeah kind of uh, you know judge someone but like these people talk about killing people on their songs i mean it's not unfathomable that these motherfuckers are like you know what let's just take care of this guy you know what i mean so yeah. I don't know that part seems wild to me, but yeah, because I have seen like random videos of him losing his mind. But I always thought he had some one off. He was drunk, but then even go back to remember the thing that he got, got him suspended off like complex when he like went at Chrissy Teigen. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, this guy really could cross a line or does cross a line more often than not. And I know it's been working out great for his career because this guy's doing very well, but I don't know I feel like at some point like that shtick can only get you so far. Without yeah. getting you in trouble. And I do like understand where he's coming from. I know like a lot of these, I'm sure it's tough dealing with a lot of these rappers who are just like foul and, and ignorant in a lot of different ways. So I'm sure some of that rubs off on him and he, he's like, you know, look at you. Like I'm, I made something of myself yeah. and you're over here trying to knock me down. Or some of them are probably petty and mad that he doesn't post them enough or mm. other things that probably just make him kind of mad at anyone who tries to to come at him in any type of way. But yeah, at the same time, like, I feel like he is quick to respond to any bit of criticism, like super in intensely. Yeah. Um, even with some dude from No Jumper who I think he just called him passive aggressive and academics flipped on him and it was saying all kinds I mean, of stuff. But we said the same thing dude when it came to the um fresh and fit pod and he just lost his mind on that poor woman it's like yeah bro like what's what's going on dude like right. god forbid anyone question academics in any fucking way yeah but i mean i think that was kind of a response to chicks who wouldn't you know give him time of day back then and back it's like how before. how dare you talk down on me when you're just like a, a smut and I'm over here a boss man with my own media business kind of thing yeah. like I'm sure I mean obviously ego you know has increased with his empire but yeah hopefully he doesn't get hurt by someone who feels like they have nothing to lose yeah and again I know Metro Boomin is connected with a lot of people who you would think were goons but I feel like also Metro Boomin doesn't give off that vibe like yeah he seems like mad chill from right. what we see on like social media yeah plus i think the thing with with people like academics or whoever who aren't like street i think a lot of the street guys don't want to like take Cross it too that far line. and get the, yeah. the law involved because they know in a heartbeat like a regular civilian is going to call the feds or the police or whoever yeah, yeah, yeah. and get them reported yeah because same that we say like with uh with six like the rules the same rules don't apply to academics yeah yeah so yeah, that's also true. He maybe and maybe that's why he honestly feels so comfortable antagonizing them. He's like, bro, what are you gonna do? Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you ain't gonna do shit. So yeah. maybe he's right. But um, yeah, that was yeah, that was just funny to see, bro. We were saying that shit up to each other like offline on Instagram. I was like, yeah, like I don't really know why he keeps going. Like it was like <laughs> every five seconds, like a new post. I'm like, bro, I think he's I think Metro's done responding, but uh just funny to see. But uh not to make this a whole episode just about you know the, the fallout from the uh the hit boy alchemist song which again was a great song i did want to bring up a topic real real quick um just to talk about like because i think you and i are both struggling to find new music that can keep us engaged for extended periods of time like music did back in the day right you brought up diving into your facebook stories uh facebook posts from back in the day i've been doing <laughs> similar things as well just looking for music can still keep me attentive for hours on end so I wanted to then ask the question, like, what were, in our lifetimes, the best eras in hip-hop, right? Like, and with that, I was able to come to the conclusion, for me personally, the way hip-hop moved me, um, I would say the mixtape era in hip-hop was my favorite era, specifically 03 to 07. And this mm. is G-Unit on its highest run, right? New DJ Who Kid mixtapes all the fucking weeks and then this is when little wayne was on an unprecedented run that you knew whatever carter three drop 
this is going to be the album of the year, but these mixtapes came like, yo, just keep dropping mixtapes, bro. So I think for me, my favorite era in hip hop was like 03 to 07, nonstop G Unit mixtapes, and then Lil Wayne's mixtapes with DJ Drama just fucking making you feel like, bro, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, it was a different sound, bro, like a completely different sound. And the thing I love the most about the 50 Cent G Unit run was like, bro, like, their their songs because it really I think their skill was they took the other people's songs and made it better, bro. But they made you forget or not even like the original version. And yeah, I was yeah. like, bro, how are you doing this, bro? Because like right. when some people like you know bite other people's beats, I'm like, yeah, whatever, it's fine. Like the the the, the original one still slaps. That's why you copy that beat. But like, bro, they made you forget about the original person who made that song. And I was like, bro, this is next level. So. That was my favorite run in hip hop. How about you? Mine actually kind of overlaps with your time frame, but I think Ski was a little later. So I was thinking more so like 2005 to 2010. Um, and I think the mixtape component of it was was definitely part of that. Um, but towards the, the earlier part, so t- 2005 to let's say 2007, um, I think during that period, I just felt like there was a, a really good balance of different types of music. I know at that mm. point, you know, Southern music was kind of dominating, but you still had, you know, G unit projects. You still had Kanye who was, you know, on the come up and all kinds of different artists who were just coming out with, I think really solid music in my opinion. Um, and the reason why I said the other portion 2007 to let's say 2010 um i think that's when you know things like uh social media and blogging and and whatnot really took off and there was just really an an influx of i think many more independent artists artists coming to light um and especially ones with different backgrounds because like i think up until g unit like i pretty much was of the the belief that damn near every rapper was like part of some gang or clique you had to, or whatever. Yeah, damn, you had to be some kind of thug or had right. some kind of thug affiliation. Mm-hmm. And the idea of rapping was like, as a uh, regular person, um, was just foreign to me at that point. Mm. I was like, there's no way I could begin rapping unless I'm like talking about selling drugs that I don't even have or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I actually wrote a couple raps like for fun in, in high school. Like nothing serious. I didn't even record it. I just wrote it down. But like, it was it was corny and stupid it wasn't anything gang related but it was still cheesy it wasn't anything that I right made. but to your point you felt you it had to be a back component otherwise yeah. no one's listening to you or even saying like why are you a rapper then yeah i think if i remember the lyric correctly it was like i don't gang bang but i still make them get low like yin yang or something something stupid um but yeah when, once i got to college that's when uh the more independent artists started coming to light like even nipsey mac miller j cole drake and i was just so yeah wiz i think wiz has a line right yeah that wiz he used oh, yeah. to say that yeah you guys just make fun of me for mm-hmm. like smoking in my songs that's all you guys do now like right yeah he was my favorite artist uh in college and i think that just really encouraged me to to make my own music because at that point i had i had been playing around with stuff on garage band and whatnot and it felt like it was so easy to to find new artists and a lot of them were being promoted directly to you um so that era era felt like a a a gold mine of new music popping up from all kinds of regions and new artists who like were changing the game like kendrick and stuff because now i feel like we're kind of losing steam as far as that kind of stuff goes but I mean, also to your point, I think you mentioned earlier, the barriers of entry are just so low, mm-hmm. right? So like everyone thinks they can rap now. So it's yeah. like, bro, like, no, like they forget that this is like a skill you must actually possess. Um, right. And I think time has proven you correct though, because in that time frame, like you said, dude, we got the Mac Miller's Wiz, J. Cole, um, dude, Drake essentially was an independent artist, right? Like he dropped so mm-hmm. far gone being an independent artist. Um, Kendrick, uh, Vince Staples, Joey, ba- like these guys all came from that time and yeah. like they're still relevant or did a great, already did great things in music, you know, fast forward 10, 12 years later. So no, I do that. I would say, damn, so what, what would we call that era? It's like the indie, like the indie run, like the indie hip hop era. Like, 
like indie era or blog era maybe the blog era blog is good. era yeah, yeah the blog era yeah because that's really where i think i would go to like so.com um and i'd be like oh who's a new artist gonna talk about this week right i saw something mm-hmm. about that's when i saw that's where i actually discovered mike posner on a blog right, I was right. Like, oh, this is fire and then i was like oh who's this guy on this song and i'm like oh that's big sean and then fucking yeah, yeah you're right so that, that that was a dope era that was a very dope era bro but then those are the best because whenever you like put other people on you were like bro i'm giving you literally gold to like <laughs> absorb this and tell your friends right because like i would yeah. hate when i would put people on to like mike poser mixtapes and they're like it's fine i'm like bro nothing else is out like this like are you right. fucking kidding like, me and then when he yeah. gets famous and drops a great album like oh bro i bid on him i'm like no dude you've been talking shit like i've been trying right. to put you on so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like the blog era. The blog era was a great time in hip hop. Um, so obviously, to every favorite, there is a least favorite. So for me personally, we're living in my least favorite time of hip hop, and that is the abundance of drill music. The drill era for me is the worst era in the history of hip hop, if not music, bro. Like mm-hmm. I just, it's it's too similar. It's oversaturated. It's annoying as fuck, and literally, I just no creativity whatsoever. Like, I think Pop Smoke set the bar so fucking high that everyone thought, like, oh, dude, if this guy did at 19, imagine what I can do. And it's like, no, dude, like, some people are just very good at their craft, and then the rest of you are biting. Like, again, 5 year Ford has, like... Also, your voices aren't deep enough. Yeah, that also made I just go with it. You know what I mean? Like, you need to fucking spark marble packs from, like, the age of five. <laughs> but... And like five year have his has his moments, but for the most part, even him, I'm like, bro, like, no, this isn't it. So yeah, for me personally, I know like the people who may listen to this are may enjoy that shit, but like talk say in the comments, but bro, like I'm telling you, the drill music era is my least favorite era of all the eras I've been li- I've lived through my life so far when it comes to hip hop. How about yourself? No, you hit the nail on the head. Um, I was gonna say the same thing. I, I didn't want to because <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to admit that I'm living in my least favorite era I today that shit to what's be the, the worst era of your life Blair today today is the worst <laughs> right I'm trying to be op- uh, optimistic but it, it really is uh unfortunate and shout out to this new younger rapper name his name's La Tyler he's from Florida actually okay. um and it's funny because he's he's I think he's like 16 but every video the comments are like I let my son listen to this because he only raps about money and getting girls. He doesn't rap about drilling, which is like sad because, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, liking money and girls at 16. But it's funny how like, I think that used to be considered like somewhat corny negative like the yeah like the materialistic yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, ooh, like you all you care about is chains and, and fast girls but now that's like nice because we're like at least you're not murdering people in yeah, yeah, the yeah. block and pissing on graves like it's, it's funny how we've made this shift to such a, a dark uh concept within music yeah no dude i totally agree but yeah that, that does suck bro that we're like in the era we hate the most right because like because I also remember, like, when, like you said, when you were in the blog, like, the, t- being in the blog era, like, you felt like, bro, this is different. Like, how the fuck am I just, like, finding my new favorite artist every other week, you know? And I, and again, I felt that way with the mixtapes, bro. Like, you were, like, why was I looking so eagerly for Lloyd Banks to rap over your beat? You know what I mean? And I'm like, right. bro, I, I remember in the moment, like, appreciating it so much. And, yeah, I, and I, but I very distinctly remember, like, the moments I have when I, like, see a random like world star hip-hop post or academics repost i'm like bro there's no way you actually like this shit bro like there's yeah. no fucking way so yeah yeah hope i mean again dude how much longer do you think this run has though the drill one um shit basically until everyone's court cases are, are <laughs> like seems like everyone who pops off like two months later they get a murder charge or a gun charge and i'm like some some of the songs are good, but at, at the end of the day, I'm like, I already know what you're going to say. And I don't yeah. care about some random click you're beefing with across the street, especially because it's like, I've heard this phrase a lot and I like it, but the rebels without a cause. Like at a certain point, it's just like, what are you really beefing about? Have a, cause. Cause, have, yeah, a have a cause. Have a cause. And it's not like, I think we're over the whole, like back in the day, you know, Crips and Bloods, you know, had this, almost like cinematic 
a lore to it where like you actually yeah. gave a shit. Um, whereas now it's just like there's damn near like tiny there's I think all you need is like four people to create a gang now. Like you and I could create one and who the next podcast is our op and we can just start making drills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no mode uh like purpose behind half this shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think for me, like on the uh four 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 album that Jay-Z put out, I think twenty seventeen, when he said you're really gonna die over the block your grandma pays rent on, I was mm-hmm. like, Oh, that shit. I was like, Yeah, dude, like dude, like you don't even own this, bro. Like it's not like defending yeah. your property, like you pay rent. Like I don't know, like right. like what's so serious about this for you? So no, 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 for sure. But yeah, I, I think if I'd ask myself, I think like it's I would assume this is the last twelve months of drill music. Like, I think the consumer at some point is going to be like, bro, like, no, man, like, we can right. only make so many TikToks of getting sturdy, like, <laughs> but then I get worried because, dude, when I was in New York right now, I have two nine-year-old nieces, and all they wanted to do was show me how they got sturdy. So it's like, fuck, dude, it's like, now, like, whatever, it's not even Gen Z, whatever that generation is, are they going to just prolong this along and, like, want to just keep making TikToks for the next two, like, I don't even know, bro, yeah. but... I, I guess like I'm hoping this is the last year of it, bro. Cause I really think the consumers and like, bro, like, okay, we, we, we've heard this, like just yeah. stop. No, it'll have to go away. I mean, snap music, like the down South little John beats and stuff. You would have, you would have sworn at the time that shit would be around forever, but bro, and that, yeah, that away. shit was nonstop, bro. There was a new one. Yeah. Every, there was a new group every month. Yeah. <laughs> bro. It, yeah. It was, yeah. It was a DL four or D- yeah. DL four Laffy Taffy. Shit, Lil John was on everything at that period. Everyone, like every song. Yeah, and he and I actually it, liked it though. So. I did like it. I never at that moment I never thought that was oversaturated, mm-hmm. but in hindsight, that shit was oversaturated. Bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, like he peaked when he got those like Usher cosigns. Like oh, that yeah, was yeah. him just fucking. You know, I'm gonna make a bag and then go DJ in Vegas for the next 20 years of my life. Um, yeah. So yeah, they're good for him. That, that's that's yeah, that was wow, that fucking era was crazy, bro. Like mm-hmm. you had yeah, you had fucking like old ladies singing East Side Boys and shit. Like you're like, bro, like yeah. you know these lyrics? Like, like, <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, no, thanks for uh, sharing your thoughts, bro. And uh everyone leave in the comment section uh your favorite era and what do you think is your least favorite area era in the uh in hip hop since you've been alive. Uh but before we get out of here, as always, episode 135, here the week. Check out the new revamped uh, playlist on both Spotify and Apple Music. Definitely enjoy that. Um, by the way, guy, what is a, a song while you were living in your bachelor pad that you enjoyed the most this weekend? So this one actually came across uh, my playlist when I was shuffling after I picked up the wifey. Um, and it's, it's an older one. So in honor of the upcoming Ray Shremmerd album, this song isn't on that album, but it's on their previous one. The song is called Teed Up. Um, Teed up. And I let it play because sometimes when a song appears too much or like, I think I'm not going to want to listen to it, I'll skip it. But I let it play and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, like, so you've been seeing that song pop up a lot recently for you? Yeah. And I clearly liked it at one point. But I think since I never proactively wanted to listen to it i kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. have a tendency to skip it yeah but i let it play and i was like oh this is why i liked it um so that the beats fires is a club banger clearly one of those ones that for some reason didn't make it to the radio waves but sure. i think it's an absolute fire song and it reminded me that ray shremmerd is one of those mainstream mainstream groups that i feel like provides something different than underrated. a lot of the artists out underrated. um and Sway Lee and Slim Jimmy, I, I like the fact that they're both distinct. Like Sway Lee kind of is more melodic and sings Slim Jimmy. I personally think his raps uh, and flow is super dope. So I'd check out that song if you haven't heard it before. Teed Up. Yeah, send me that. Teed Up. Uh, how, when did that song come out? Uh, 2018. Okay, so not too long. Well, I guess pre-COVID. So I guess that was a time yeah. where you would have thought it would have been like a radio hit. It's wild. I was thinking when you were saying that, like, I, I, I don't even know, like, if that's, that's, you know how we have, like, just phrases that, like, are, like, in, d- embedded in our brain just to use? But mm-hmm. I feel like radio friendly is going to change if Biden doesn't ban TikTok to, like, TikTok friendly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, this is a TikTok banger. Because, bro, like, I don't fucking listen to the radio. 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah. who does that, bro? Like, even, like, the radio shows that are, like, you know, The Breakfast Club or Ebro in the Morning, like, those guys don't play music. Like, it's just conversations they're having and guest appearances, right? So the idea of, like, right. what the radio tells us, like, it's more like, is it playlist friendly for, like, you know, the big major, yeah. like, platforms? Or is it, like, TikTok, you know, a TikTok right. banger? But the thing with TikTok is, like, I have no idea what is going to be successful. Because I every time I make a song, I mean, I never, like, go into the into the booth and say all right i'm trying to make a tiktok banger today but sometimes right. as i'm gonna promote it i'm like will this do well like what what would make it do well and every time i go to tiktok i'm like how did this shit go viral it'll be like a super dirty song some of them are like just straight up weird some of them are just mediocre to me and not to like shit on someone else's success but i think i'm more sure. so confused not like Bitter. Yeah, yeah, like how, like there has to be a logic here that I just don't yeah. understand. Um, yeah, I don't know, dude. Maybe you have to do a dance. Like maybe that's, maybe that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> like get the cats involved or something, bro. Like just, oh, look yeah. how my cats reacts to Blair Anthony's song. Have you heard yeah. it yet? Um, but but yeah, it's never no, like the hook, really. It's like sometimes it'll be like just one little ass, like yeah, one verse, part of the like, song. Like, like, like yeah, like ten seconds of it, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. But I feel like the ones, at least in the last year and a half, that have gone the most viral are those songs that, like, are a blatant copy of a song from, like, 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like, so maybe now, it's just the nostalgia factor. True. Yeah, that that aspect. Um, and then I don't know if you noticed, or I saw a video, a lot of um, TikTok songs or artists who are trying to be TikTok friendly will kind of do a, a cliche play on... Uh, like lullabies and stuff like A B C D F U, like I don't want to be with you anymore, or like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, How I Wonder Why the Fuck You Broke My Heart, like stupid shit like that. Really? No, yeah. I haven't seen that, bro. I haven't. Again, but this is I, I've still like I I don't I haven't gone on my personal page yet since the New Year. Like mm -hmm. I still have my foot down on that. I'm like, bro, like Same. I don't want to get sucked in, bro. Like these. Oh no, that shit is a vortex. It's a vortex, bro. And like I, I'll be perfectly honest with you, listeners, like bro, like it's also like the. um Bro, like, I know it's going to be, like, a judgment on me, and it's fine, but, like, bro, you can just look at one, like, thought page for more than 10 seconds, and, like, that's your feed for the next 10 days. And it's like, bro, like, I, I didn't even like it. Like, like I didn't even like it. <laughs> That's so true. I can't, I can't join that app. That, and that happened to me on Instagram. Like, oh, someone really? sent me a, I don't know, it was, like, an Asian actress, and then my Explore feed is fucking all, like, random bro. Asian girls. I'm like... I didn't even like this shit. I didn't even share it. Like, what is going on? Yo, I'm like, this is too much, dude. Like, yeah. And then, like, you feel uncomfortable, like, being in a public space and just scrolling aimlessly because it's like, dot, dot, basketball, yeah. dot. I'm like, bro, and they know that algorithm knows who, like, all your darkest, deepest desires. Yo, bro, yes. Yeah, so I just stay the fuck away from it, bro. Like, I don't need that constant visualization. But definitely send me teed up. Uh, again, Ray Shimmer, definitely underrated. Uh, definitely excited to peep their album when it comes out. You said next week? uh april 7th okay so three weeks away not terrible yep. okay, so I'm, I'm excited for that but for me uh i actually enjoyed finding this new song it was on the way um from the airport uh in new york to my aunt's house and we played a lot over the weekend when we had some downtime it's called the um it's by an artist called El eladio Caridón, um puerto rican artist apparently he got famous in spain um, so apparently he was doing like a lot of reggaeton stuff in Puerto Rico for a while, but when he went to Spain, again, like randomly someone picked him up and it, and it blew up. And then this one actually features Futures the remix. It's called Mbappe. Um, Mbappe, for those who know, world famous soccer player, um, killing it, 22 years old, probably the best player in the world. But it's just like it's like a fun clubbing song, dude. Like or yet you're getting like a pregame song, bro. Like it's just the Spanish lyrics are fire. His flow is actually very good. Um, and it's just him about talking about being fly, you know, like the video, I think is shot in Miami. The video is actually nice. very fun to watch. It's like a pregame, like just as a background, uh, future oh, is always going to be future and enjoyable if you're a future fan, but, no, but it was fun to hear a, a Hispanic artist and it not be corny, but they're still trying to like live the hip hop lifestyle, right? Like I, at no it. point in hearing this song and I'm like, bro, like you're just like, we were saying about Playboy Carl, like, yo, like, I don't believe you actually like this demonic shit or whatever i think you're just like hey i have a niche i can grab on to be popular 
it really felt like this guy's like lives these lyrics like yo dude i'm nice. like successful i love getting fly i'm young and rich blah 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 so if you want a fun feel good song i would recommend mbappe remix by uh, eladio carion and future no yeah i heard it once i, I liked it a lot um, yeah, the video is fun, dude. The video is a shot in Miami. Again, typical, like, whatever, dude. It's like two guys and like a thousand girls. And it's like, bro, how, how can this not be a fire video? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely That's that. one thing that those, I feel like uh, the Spanish artists invest heavy in their, their music videos. Heavy. Like, they're bro. always good. Like, no matter w- w- how popular the artist is. Heavy, dude. Because I think it was like two Christmas ago. Like, we were at my dad's house and we were just vibing. You know, Christmas dinner was finished early and we were like, yo, let's keep drinking and watching music videos. Bro, the thought I kept having, and it's not even just reggaeton, like all Spanish men art, male artists, bro, not to shit on any male like hip hop artists, but dude, the quality of women in these fucking videos is crazy, dude. Like, drop dead go- and this is not like showing you my type because trust me spanish women are not like my family will attest to this but <laughs> the quality of women in these videos i'm like bro like how is it even possible like how this is like shouldn't she be more famous than like third dot from the yeah. left like you know what i mean like yeah no it is it is absurd uh the quality difference i think i don't know i, I think the rappers and stuff are, are so accustomed to the fake body plastic stripper types mm. that we were, t- were used to seeing those in, in our American artist music videos. Yeah. Yeah. And then, the, yeah, you're right. Because if you see that girl like walking around, you're always like, bro, like that's not real. Whereas mm. with like some of these Spanish videos, you're like, oh, dude, I can like, I, she's definitely at a club in Miami somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. it's not like crazy, but she's also like dropped at gorgeous. But uh, yeah, yeah, so no, definitely two, new, uh, well, two new songs for me. Um, if you guys have heard Teed Up before, put in the comments, uh, you know, if you're excited for the new album. But uh, we'll definitely have those both on, uh, we'll have those both up on both playlists. Um, but yeah, man, that's pretty much it. Let the people know where they can uh, catch us, what we got going on. Let's get out of here. Yes, sir. Check us at audio-theory.com. New episode every week on all platforms. We also have the Spotify and Apple Music playlist on there, including merch as well. If you're on YouTube, check below. There's links to the merch. So copy something. Other than that, obviously more content, new episodes coming up, still working on, you know, interviews and collabs and other things that we can uh, deliver to you guys. But outside of that, we'll just keep bringing you new content, not just news related, but also wider topics within music and and whatever else peaks our interest. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, my dude. Appreciate you as always. Love you. Appreciate you. Love you. Peace. Peace.